There's that notification. Where is that notification? I haven't, I haven't seen it pop up yet. Oh, yep, there it is. Yeah, I got it. DD214 Gaming Podcast is for mature audiences only. Any videos, music, or entertainment not originating from DD214 Gaming is used and covered under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976, also known as Fair Use. Opinions expressed are our own and do not represent any DOD or U.S. government entities as a whole. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. You are no longer alone now because we have you. My brother how you doing still alive man how are you i'm feeling good today man yeah yeah feeling real good today tell me about it why why you feeling so good john well actually i got you know to kind of talk i before we get into like the week in review and stuff like this uh-huh oh, wait can you hear that music yeah ladies and might gentlemen be little, might be a little loud that's better yeah ladies and gentlemen first off Breaking news, DD214 now has background music. Original yes, background music. Do. Made by the one and only Axe Jackson, a.k.a. Emperor Washington, a.k.a. Shrieks, a.k.a. El Pupo Notorio. Um, I think I got that one wrong. Thank you very much. We just, nothing but appreciation, you know, humility. That's awesome, dude. Like, this gentleman gave us access to his entire music catalog that he has... Uh, available on the internet uh, for nothing, just for 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 being a for being a good dude, I guess. And he's an so Air you Force you veteran, guys. So, yeah, Axe Jackson, thank you very very much, much appreciated. Thank you. So and much. actually, we're gonna have a good conversation because I mean, that's Can team we, that's team building, you know. That's fucking teamwork, man. And, and that, we, that's fucking teamwork. And we have and no. guys, stay tuned because we're gonna have a fantastic conversation today because we have something to tell you today. You. I uh. Uh, speaking of uh, uh, all that uh, shit, what was I gonna say? Son of a bitch. Well, that just happened. Oh, oh, can uh, can we give him a round of applause? Do we have access to those still? Oh, we we certainly do. There's just can we so give Max Jackson a big ass round of applause, please. I got you. I got you. They changed the website here. Where is my? Uh... Oh, I, I totally put John on the spot. And fucked us up. No, I have too many. There's too many buttons. There's too many buttons. Just too many buttons. Where's Joe? Where's Joe? Axe Jackson. There you go. Thank you very much, Axe Jackson. And guys, check him out. I was going to say, where's, where's Joe? If he was here, I'd fire him again. <laughs> <laughs> we do miss him. We do miss him. I we... fucking miss Joe, dude. I miss Joe. I love him so it's much. It's funny because like, we... I've been playing. We've been playing Civilization Revolution this week. Yeah. Which is a fantastic game if you've never played it. Um, I have no it's it's like risk for adults. Okay, you that know? sounds sure. So so what you pretty much do? You build a country. You have your character. You build a country. You you build your armies and stuff like that. And you can make peace with other countries or you can invade them. Well, I was in war with Spain, and Joe was two turns away from getting his ass blasted by a fucking by a fucking uh, war plane a couple days ago. So until the game ended. Did I tell you? Did I tell you? I uh, I also enjoy a game of Risk here and there. You want to hear? You want to hear uh, how my my game gets played? 
Let's hear it. So when I play Risk, uh, you're 40 years old, and it's 2 o'clock in the morning in Kansas City, Missouri, and you go to the only biker bar around the corner that op- that's still open till 3. That's my game of Risk. <laughs> Never trust the man with the mustache, right? I'm telling you, dude. That's I'm risk. Telling you, dude. That's risk. That's risk. That's fucking risk, bro. You, you know, but the, the game... <laughs> That's the, the, real risk. <laughs> but civilization is great, man. I, I, I like playing as Australia, you know, because I, I you get some really cool uh, armies with Australia, but yeah. Uh-huh. Another cool thing, before we... I, I Again, have you been watching baseball? Have you seen anything that happened this week in baseball? Uh, uh, here and there. Here, I keep up mainly, like, almost exclusively with the, with the Royals, traditionally, uh, when it comes to baseball. They're here because this I like weekend, that. by the way. And I, well, and you, you, you know, I, I keep up on it, I guess, enough, but I really don't, I don't dive into scores, I don't dive into standings. Usually around playoff time is when I'll start paying a little bit more attention to the standings, so we've got, that's, that's August and September, basically. So basically, like late next month, early September is when I'm going to start actually probably paying attention to other teams around the league. Yeah, and yeah, like, and and this is not this is not just this year because we moved to Kansas City. This do, is you want to do a bracket this year? Maybe, yeah, maybe. Because um, I was going to say because like this 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 has followed me my entire life. This is even growing up in in Arizona as a Royals fan in Arizona. I would traditionally I pay attention to like how the Royals did, you know, the night before, read the box score or whatever. You know, and and carry on. If somebody pitches a no hitter, you know, if somebody hits three home runs at an All Star game, which should in theory be a, be impossible, yeah, I'll, I'll see some of those news clips. You know what I mean? But outside of that, I really don't keep up as much on baseball as otherwise might might seem. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> interesting. So what happened? My favorite team to hate. Uh huh. Lost twenty five to three by the Blue Jays the other day. 20, wait, what? 25 to 3. 25? As in 2-5? Uh, as, as, as in the score that the New England Patriots came back to defeat the Atlanta Falcons in, in the Super Bowl? At the, you know, it was 25 to 3 in the third quarter? Like, they won 25 to 3? So, let's, uh, let's go back and let's confirm okay. this because they did lose by extravagant 28. You're, you're, 28. They lost by 25 fucking points. Blue Jays score franchise record 28 runs in blowout win versus the Red Sox. That's not a fucking blowout, dude. That's like a fucking, like, anal fucking demolishing, dude. That's just like, bro, prolapse. <laughs> Pro fucking laps, dude. <laughs> like, you gotta go to the hospital, bro. Shit ain't fucking right, dude. Shit ain't right. <laughs> Yeah, dude. And, Twenty-five. And, they lost by twenty-five fucking runs. Yeah. In baseball. <laughs> God fucking damn. It. That's what they scored. They scored an average of fucking three runs a fucking inning. Three point three runs an inning. Yeah. That was their fuck. Or no, actually, that would not be three point three. Excuse me. Let's just say. Let's keep it at three. It's my fucking cal- it's my, the calculator. Up, my head just broke. Right now, the Rangers. Um, the Texas Rangers hold the record for thirty runs in a game. In 2007, I, I don't even. I have no words for that in baseball. Is, that's just. That's a legitimate. That is a legitimate football score. You know what I mean? Like that's a legitimate football score. That's yeah, not even. That's. A, that is an absurd. That is an absurd amount of runs to score, in a baseball game. And I just like, want to thank the Boston absurd. Red Sox for giving me something to talk about them again. So thank you, man. Don't, hey, man. Twenty-eight to three is embarrassing. You're gonna, dude. You're gonna be hearing from fucking Bodette on that one, dude. You're gonna be hearing from him. Yeah. He's probably not happy about that shit. It's fucking socks got rocked, dude. And, and socks actually, socks got their fucking, they got their fucking shit pushed in. And and actually, uh, Chris Bodette wrote to me this week. You need, oh, yeah? to, you need to get in the party, Jay. He's watching for all mankind, baby. It's time. Okay. Well, and, yeah. I'll talk to Nikki about it. I'll talk to Nikki yeah, about it. If That's, you, we've if, been, if we've you, been, me, me, me and. Well, I'll, I'll tell you about it in the week. No, yeah. if, the week you, of... if you need that Apple password, I got you, homie, because I – God, it's so – I know you do. I know you do, bro. I it's fucking so... love the, the fucking dude, future, bro. Cable I just, free, it's dude. So, I, I, I want to spoil something so bad to, to nah, entice good. people to come to the show. No, nah, you don't need to do that. They'll do it on their own. But all I'm saying dude, is just that like, we're on Mars. Just like, just like our little just, – just, just, like just like our happy little show right here. Just like our happy little show. You know what I mean? I will say, if you want to see, 
but we're we're one episode away from the season finale, right? Okay. It just got renewed for another season. Okay. Okay. This. What's show... this one about again? Is this the one about the fucking moon and shit and the alternate history? Yeah, but we're not in the moon no more. We're on Mars now. Yeah, and Mars. Yeah, yeah. You said that we were going to Mars and shit, right? Oh yeah, they're there. Okay. And something right, really fuck. bad has happened, like really fucking fuck, bad. Yeah. So. Fuck yeah, bro. Yeah, fucking and that's chaos. what makes the show well, so good. Fucking bro. happens. It's just that bad fucking things chaos, keep. Bro. They they have they have no they don't run out of any ideas how to kill somebody on that show. Let me tell you. Well, good. The I fuck. I can definitely take that We kind of have shit. a thirty that's year. That's a good subject. We have a thirty year character development on this show. Uh huh. You know. I, it's, it's it just sounds like the kind of subject matter that's right up my alley. You know what I mean? Just death, death, destruction, chaos. You know what I mean? Like fear. Russians you know what losing. I mean? like, Russians getting their fucking shit pushed in. Fucking even worse than even worse than the Boston Red Sox. Fucking turning turning entire fields in Ukraine yeah. into sunflowers. But let's also Man. not forget <laughs> the fact that this show also chimes in on real world issues that were going on in that time, the AIDS mm-hmm. pandemic. Which they're they're talking about people they still think in this time they're going with the storyline that people think it's contagious. You know that's I mean it is. You know that's where that's that's Jay. <laughs> I mean it is. It's just it's just sexually transmitted is all. Yeah. It's fucking definitely can it's definitely fucking contagious, bro. It's fucking it's the gift that keeps on giving, homie. Yeah. Well you know, you know what I mean? Well you know what I mean the, there in the, the Yeah. Did you did you read recently? Like they're like they've pretty much cured it at this point. Did you know that? Yeah. The HIV. Yeah. They're like they're, they're they've begun they've begun and they've had success with uh, human trials, and fucking like they're getting ready to fucking create a vaccine for fucking HIV, dude. So like, how about a round of applause for fucking scientists and science? Definitely a round of applause for science. Yeah, science, bitch. You know what I mean? Let me tell you something yeah. though, and. You know the, the the way that this show deals with these issues, LGBTQ uh-huh. uh, uh, themes and and. Do um, you think they got the recipe for the uh, HIV vaccine in the Bible? I'm just asking. Oh wait, is this a theory you've heard before? No, I, I I'm just being. A, I'm curious. I'm just I mean, being a real dude. Fuck, I mean, being a real fucking asshole. No, I'm just being a real fucking asshole. It's, like it's okay to be an asshole, Jay. Yeah, well, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people in the '80s fucking died of AIDS, and a lot of fucking hate and fucking hysteria was fucking created around certain groups of people, you know, for fucking no good reason because a bunch of people that fucking you know have no fucking understanding of fucking science and technology or how fucking viruses and fucking shit like that fucking yeah. work in the human fucking body and, and, decide to fucking throw their two cents in, you know what I mean? But but hey, I'm just fuck, I'm just fucking spitballing here. I just remember, I just remember watching it all happen when I was a fucking kid growing up in the '80s. So yeah, you know. I'll tell you where they definitely did not find the HIV vaccine. They definitely did not find it in the Holy Bible. That's all I'm going to say. And you're not wrong about yeah. that either. So, just saying. But yeah, they 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 write these these world events that are happening around these characters uh-huh. and it works. It works. It's believable. The science is grounded and if you go through like YouTube or through the Apple TV Plus they have, they have sections where it explains the science to you, where it's kind of like, um, kind of like Interstellar. Yeah, exactly. So even though, even though, even though Interstellar was kind of based on um, theoretical science, yeah, it was, it was shown, it was shown in such a way like that, our current understandings like that, that's about what it would be like. In other words, yes. Mm-hmm. So like there's there's applied there's applied physics and shit like that in the show I'm assuming and all that. Yep, and they and they talk about it. They gr- they break it down for you. So you know it's like okay we're not just they're definitely gonna need to break shit down for me, bro. Like I'm I'm like I'm like two steps short of like straight brain damage right now. So and not, but not, you know. but not just that. <laughs> but you're the kind of guy that watches something, and you want it. You want you want to make sure it makes sense. Like oh god yes. Dude. You know oh god yes. I, and that's I lose. TV shows and movies lose me immediately if they don't fucking exactly. if they don't pay attention. So I know. think they did if a they really good attention. job with explaining the breakdown. Like, okay, this happened because of this situation, and it uh-huh. makes sense. So they, I, I, I give the producers of this show, like, mad props because they, they make because they said it themselves. They're in Comic Con this week, and they said it themselves. They were like, we, we sit in a room and we come up with the most ridiculous deaths, and then we think 
which which are the more believable ones what's the real science behind this is this possible is this something that that has happened before so huh and we're still 10 10 10 to 10 so guys if you're, okay if you're not okay yeah so also uh comic con happened this is happening I think it's All still right. happening today. I don't know what's happening today, but uh, some things that happen. Rick Grimes, uh, they're doing the Rick Grimes show for The Walking Dead, which, what uh -huh. did you say before the show? I couldn't agree About more. About what? <clears throat> oh, how? A um, couple years too I, uh, late. We, yeah. I mean, I don't, I didn't even know they were coming out with a thing with him. Um, yeah. I remember... I got into The Walking Dead on my first deployment in Afghanistan, so this would have been like 2011. And I remember that we watched this, the first six episodes. It was season one; it was only six episodes. You ever watch them in black and white? No, but I'll tell you what: They're watching really it good. in a fucking watching it in a fucking in a fucking in a little tent in fucking dark ass fucking Afghanistan at night, dude, is fucking pretty creepy too, bro. No shit, right? That's an experience. Oh, yeah, it was. It very much was, and it, and honestly, like it, that's what kind of. I had re I, w I had previously read the uh, a lot of the comics. I was very familiar before the show yeah. ever came out with 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 the subject matter. But, um, the um, watching it in Afghanistan was very surreal, extremely surreal, very, very dreamlike. You know what I mean? Very yeah. very dreamlike. Especially especially like after you know you like take take a cigarette break like after after an episode you know to like fucking take it all in. Yeah. You fucking walk out of this. You walk out of this tent, dude, and it is just fucking darkness, you know. Because after, after fucking the sun goes down, dude, like you know, fucking noise and light discipline, yeah. So maybe not as maybe maybe not as much noise discipline, but definitely fucking light discipline, yeah. right? So like we are, uh, we were on a very small fob in uh, way up north in fucking RC West. So it was a uh, province called Bad Geese, and we were at a place called Balam or Gob. And outside of Balam or Gob, that's a village. Outside of Balam or Gob was a, 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 a fob that had been, I'm assuming, created on the remnants of what might, may have been an old Soviet base because outside of this fob was an old fucking battered fucking dead-ass fucking, like, Soviet fucking APC. Oh, shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. And fucking, we, dude, we used to drive by fucking Soviet-era shit all the time, dude. Like, on all, like, all of my deployments. You see fucking just shit all over the place. Like, that's just been there for fucking, like, 30, since, 40 fucking years. Yeah, since the 90s, since the war happened, apparently. 80s. 80s. 80s, 80s excuse me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, same, same, same. And so, um, but yeah, anywho, you know, it's like you go out for a cigarette after watching one of those episodes, and it's just fucking creepy as shit, dude. Like, I'm, I'm, I don't scare easy, right? So, like, right. you can give me with a fucking, you can give me with a jump scare just like anybody else. I'm fucking human. You know, this is not a challenge or whatever. But as far as, like, just feeling that, that just kind of, like, stomach turning, like, ugh, like, I'm a little creeped out right now. That's one of those times where, like, yeah, fucking, like, shit, shit'll get, shit gets to me a little bit. You know what I mean? I was, like, in the middle of fucking Afghanistan, 7,000 miles away from fucking home, you know, watching some fucking badass fucking zombie shit. And then they just fucking nosedived it, dude. And I think I stopped watching somewhere yeah, around, like, yeah. two, set, like, it was after the second uh, se season, I think. And it might even have been after the third, but it was no later than, like, early fourth season where I was like, I'm out. Just fucking out. Yeah, dude. I, um... I, I gave the fuck up. Yeah, before I, I have nothing else to say about that Walking Dead show, but I will say, um, during my time in Fort Benning, my wife and I, we went to the set of The Walking Dead. We went to a couple of the sets. Yeah. Um, they also have a whole city uh, called Sonoya, Georgia, where they film, where they filmed the whole, they closed off the whole town and yeah, they filmed you, it. At. I need you to, I need you to take it for like forty-five seconds. This dog is about to freaking start flipping shit. Do I'm it. Sorry. Yeah, 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 I got you. Woodbury. Well, if, if you guys watch The Walking Dead Season 3, it's Woodbury, the city of Woodbury. So it's an actual town called Sonoa. And in that town, it's about two, three blocks long. And there is, um, you see the cafe. There's a cafe, the Walking Dead Cafe. And they talk about how they used to see the walkers just standing out there and things like that. Along there, you go up and down the streets. There's like a Walk of Fame type plaque ordeal going on and it tells you every movie and tv show that was filmed in that area uh driving miss daisy was the first one that was filmed there i believe it had like the oldest the oldest mark there but it's a very uh tv town and with that tv town you see a, a lot of interesting little aspects of the walking dead including including like little landmarks like a couple like a couple of boulders 
maybe a tire that they left outside of the building just to keep it there as memorabilia but it's there it's really cool but the most the coolest part about it was the walking dead museum and and uh, general store that they had there looks small on the outside you walk inside there's the store they got negan's baseball bat they got the t-shirts and stuff and then um what happened there? oh yeah there, there was a set of stairs and when you go when you go downstairs it was um how do you say this there was the doors from the first episode that said don't open the dead or inside and don't it, open dead inside yeah it's the actual <laughs> doors from the show and you could actually touch them with your hand actually yeah it's pretty dope they have the jail cell from season two or three was it and they have the autographs from all the actors on the walls there so it's a it's a the muse the walking dead museum is really fucking dope dude i remember i remember, I, I just remember i love the meme dude it's it's been around for over a decade now so don't don't dead open inside and rick grimes just got that like what the fuck like, yeah yeah, like, yeah. It's like, wait, what <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> some yes. of the fucking greatest memes in like meme history come from that show though so it like really even does even, even if the fucking show took a shit dude like even if the show took a shit the it's given us some fucking on. lasting like some lasting memories dude and like definitely some fucking pop culture fucking like trivia for fucking years to come so Absolutely. cheers cheers to fucking negan by the way fucking never never gonna not like that guy dude i mean you know what i'm saying like that's a man that's a man that's a man who fucking knows where his dick is you know what i'm saying like <laughs> And he fucking grabs Negan it. He just fucking knows grabs where it. His dick is. I like that. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude. He, he, I'm not. I'm not necessarily saying he's a great dude because he's clearly not. He's he's kind of a fucking real piece of shit, right? But at least he easy, knows where his dick is. Easy, easy, lemon squeezy. There it is. There it <laughs> fuck it is. Listen, if you I'm not, hey, listen, I'm if not, you, you know Negan's, if you know Negan's backstory, you understand the guy, all right? But at the same time, he is a piece of shit. He didn't have to real kill Glenn or Abraham like that. That was. I was sometimes you fucked just, up. So, sometimes you just gotta beat a person to death in front of their friends to make a point. <laughs> no, no, not at all. So anyway, in time, so other things that happen in time, in time. I'm just I'm gonna break this down real quick because there was some really exciting stuff. The new Black Panther trailer released this morning. Okay. And that Black Panther, um, oh my god. What is it called? The Black Panther? Michael Stark, uh, welcome, welcome. Good to see you, buddy. Good, Good to morning. see you. Good morning, Mando. War for Wakanda, it's called, I believe. Sure. I, I mean, you're you're speaking Greek to me, bro. Wakanda, I, I, Wakanda I, I, like... forever. Wakanda forever. That's what okay. it's called. So, I, as we can see, there is... They, they, they didn't show a Black Panther until the very end of the trailer. Uh-huh. We don't know what's what's gonna happen. You know, we we lost the actor who played him. They have, and if they, you know, they could go with the storyline and they, and it could work. You know, they, there's there's so many different things they could do. I'm personally excited for the Black Panther movie. The first one was one of the better. You know, the, there's something about. I still, I still have never seen it, so. You got time, man. You, well, DD214 has Disney Plus now, so. You're right. You are right. Uh, yeah, but but that's that's one movie I'm super excited for that they talked about. But they said, okay, well that's the end of Phase Four. What's gonna happen for Phase Five? So Phase Five, they announced Fantastic Four. I'll tell you right now. Um, I I'm actually kind of excited. Okay, so for Phase Five, we got uh, Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania. Secret Invasion, which is coming to Disney Plus, and then Secret Invasion is kind of like uh, the precursor of what's going to happen the next. You know how Avengers has the big major events, their big event movies. Yeah, uh, no, I don't. I, um, I don't. I don't. I really. I apologize to the audience right now. Like my yeah. my knowledge and or uh, care factor for the entire MCU is basically in the negatives. So it, yeah. it's really hard for me to like quantify like how much I don't know. Like when you you're talking like well you know stuff, okay I so when I say yeah, big event I'm, I'm talking about like Infinity War. Yeah, I remember that. Okay, okay. so yeah. so the Secret Invasion is kind of like a precursor. Like okay, this, some shit's coming. Samuel Jackson will be a part of that. We have Guardians Guardians of the Galaxy three, Loki season two, 
Did you watch Loki? Which one of those shows did you watch? No, you watched Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I watched Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I made it like half an episode into Loki. Uh, zero episodes of the thing with the robot vibrator human thing. The robot uh, vibrator human thing? What the fuck are you talking about? Scarlet Witch and, and Vision. Oh, oh, WandaVision. He called there Vision a vibrator. Yeah, I mean, that's what he is, right? He's a fucking human sex doll that's a fucking sentient, basically, right? Yeah. And she um, falls in love with him. She falls in love with him because she can bend reality. It's like, a no. touching story, right? <laughs> <laughs> touching touching to who? All the all the people she enslaved to make her re her little reality? <laughs> pass. <laughs> fucking pass, dude. <laughs> like, like, no. Um, one movie I'm not excited for, it's called The Marvels. I don't, it's like the sequel to Miss Marvel. But one movie that I am excited for is Blade. Blade is coming out November of 2023. Blade? Blade. It's not Wesley Snipes, though. I wonder if, I wonder if he'll have a cameo. Good morning, uh, Miss. Good morning, Mrs. Mando. Good, good morning. morning. Mando, Pleasure to see Mandos. you. We also have Ironheart, which tells the story of a student. Oh, did you see this? Uh, I'm, I'm so sorry to interrupt. Man Mando said he, uh, somebody finally noticed my fucking Red Dragon poster. Yeah. Hey, Mando, Mando, like, real talk, dude. Like, good, lu good luck ever fucking finding one of these, dude. This is, like, direct from a fucking movie theater when the movie was fucking out. And the reason, the reason it's fucking reversed, that's, like, that's a reverse image poster. That was so that light could shine through the, uh, basically through the paper when you, uh, when you hung it up in the movie theaters. That is a fucking movie theater poster that I got. When I worked at a fucking movie theater when the movie was out, bro, like, how about that? I've, I've, sa I've saved it that many fucking years, little, and it finally fucking, it finally fucking has its place was back this on my wall. Was it before during the thespian days, the thespian age of Jay Campbell? After. This would be, uh, it, I was in my early 20s. I was like 21, I think. Yeah. So this would, so this would be about tw exactly 20 years ago? About exactly 20 years ago? Yeah. So fucking... So next we have Ironheart, which is about a student that's in the Stark, Tony Stark program, and she kind of becomes the next, like, Iron Woman, I guess. Ironheart. I don't know much about that. Oh, Agatha, shit. Coven of Chaos. That's going to be a sequel, I guess, to WandaVision. But then we oh, have... Boy. Are we going to enslave more fucking pitiful humans that don't have powers to defend themselves against Probably. fucking psychotic, psychotic fucking mutants? Now this what? one. They have announced a new Captain America movie. With Anthony Mackie. It's going to be called The New World Order. I don't know what that title is about. We'll see what happens. But Captain America, New World Order. Daredevil has been announced uh -huh. to be the first Disney Plus show to have 18 hey, Jason episodes. Jason Gasses, what's up with the thespian love, bro? Thank you. Thank you, bro. Like, thank you. Jason Gasses said his high school diploma has a thespian seal on it, so don't be hating. Oh, <laughs> the thes oh we got to have a thespian show then. Uh, the, the new Daredevil show is called Born Again. Um, there's heavy rumors that f that John Bernthal is appearing in this. And then we have the Thunderbolts, which is going to be the villains of Marvel. And then they talked about uh, number six. What they talked about six, phase six, which they only talked about Fantastic Four and other things Still that... Gonna fuck Still gonna try to fuck that fucking monkey that's already we'll fucking see. like fucked them. And then they had on. then they had a bunch of blank slates there, which they had enough. They had dates on it, but no pictures. So I, I'm look, the virgin in me wants it to be X Men. All right, the X Men <laughs> has to be in there somehow. And so they announced that the next Avengers, the Avengers are coming back with two major movies called The Age of Kang. Or the Kang Dynasty Saga, or whatever the fuck it is, and uh, what, was what was the other fucking Avengers movie called? Secret War Secret Wars, yeah. So Secret I'm familiar Wars. with I'm familiar with Secret Wars. I I own those comics. Actually. Well, they're doing a Secret 12, Wars they're, movie. They're, they're old. They're older. They're, it was a, it was a 12, 12 issue series, and um, really good, really good series action. There's only there's only one. Issue out of the twelve, I don't have. Can you guess which one that is, no. John? Uh, the first one? No, it's the it is the it is the original issue, and is the first appearance of the black symbiote costume that eventually becomes Venom. Oh, that made, that made its first, that made its that made its first appearance in those comics, and I have eleven of twelve of those comics. I do not have 
the original uh, appearance of the symbiote uh, with Spider-Man. Oh, so that's like, yeah, I have 11 out of 12 of those. Yes, sir. And so yeah. I'm just going to end now. My week in review is going to end with this. I have I watch, I played Watch Dogs 2. It is a negative two out of ten, so that means that this that Watch Dogs two dick is inverted and pushed inside of itself because that's how much that game sucks. Like can't even like circumcise it. It's yeah. Just fucking, yeah. No. Watch like Dogs. Fucking, Watch Dogs two uh, was a so fucking cute. bust. It's on game. Look at that. Pass. Look at that. An extra belly button. There you go. <laughs> now. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Uh, the prequel to well, we, we, we actually we, did, did you are you are you gonna watch the Game of Thrones prequel? Fuck no. How about oh, the wait, Lord, yes, uh, I am. I, I'm just kidding. Yes, I am. No, how about uh, the Lord of the Rings one, the Rings of Power? Probably. I don't fucking know. Yeah, I mean, we'll, I. We'll, we'll get, I, it's hard for me. I um. Can it, hold, I would like. I from what I've seen. Can from I what pause? I've seen so far, the, the prequels. The, I'm, Nikki, I'm, Nikki, seemed, Nikki seemed a little disappointed in the Game of Thrones prequel uh, preview because she said it just looks like it's turning into another Game of fucking Thrones, and well, I was I'm like, right. huh. And then, uh, and then for the the Lord of the Rings ones, act, actually looks promising. That one looks a little promising, but I haven't really seen much on it yet, so I don't know. We'll see. So yeah, I'm really digging this fucking jazz music, bro. Okay, can I stop for a second? you can you ladies do whatever and the gentlemen you jeremy strobridge is it is in the chat uh -huh. all right i was jeremy strobridge was the was the you of basic training what do you mean the older guy the wise one he was the yoda of the group i haven't spoken uh -huh. to this guy in years you know he's uh he's he's a very he's you know and i'm not you know I, we, we're all our own people but strobridge what the fuck man how are you doing man He's doing good. Long, long lost, lost, dude. Long welcome, lost, welcome. Dude. Yeah, exactly. You know, and welcome you know, lost. when when you want to talk about a guy that knows how to go under the radar, this is him. You know, dude, sounds like my kind of guy. You know, it's it's been a long time, and I'm glad to see that you're still around to breathe another day, my friend. Truly, truly, you were you were you were literally the wisest dude from the whole from the whole crew. Thirty-five-year-old yeah. motherfucker joins at thirty-five. That's right, dude. I, yeah, I got you, dude. And how? And Jay, That's... you were thirty-nine. No, well, no, I was. Tw I was twenty-nine when I joined. Oh shit, and I, my bad. I, Whoops. <laughs> I got out. And I, I got out. I got out last year when I was forty. So I made it. I made it almost twelve years. Yeah, man. You know, it's incredible. Strawbridge, I'm. I'm so happy to see you, man. I was trained Welcome before. Up. I was trained. He like I always compared this guy to to Yoda. Like he's he's Yoda. Uh, so well, yeah, when you, when, you know, when you're 18 years old and you got some fucking, like, you know, like, you know, mid-30s guy, like, fucking talking shit, like, out PT in your ass, you know, like, what do you, you know, how do you, how do you respond to that, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, when I went back to, uh, when I, re when I reclassed, uh, when I had to go uh, down to Benning to, uh, to uh, change my job over to the infantry, um, I was 30, fuck, I was 33, dude. Oh wow! And so like I was, I would. I think the next oldest guy after me was like 26. In that whole, in the whole fucking company, so we're talking like I was way fucking older than like everybody. Yeah. But I fucking, I got extended. I got extended because they didn't have a lot of bunk space. So me and a couple of other reclasses, fucking, we did 11 out of 14 weeks of OSA, dude. Like basically like redid basic training. Like and got it at, done. And I, I was, I was 33, dude. Like I was just like laughing at these motherfuckers, dude. Like. Fucking get like find your fucking dick. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like I've been, I'd already been in, I'd already been in been in the army for fucking four and a half years. I already had a year in Afghanistan under my belt, and I got all these fucking snot nosed goddamn high schoolers, dude, like trying to become fucking men. You know, and so like it wasn't just on the drills at that point. Like me and me and um, uh, my fellow reclass buddy that ended up in my platoon, we took it upon ourselves to fucking try to be the best as much as possible, be the best examples we could be to the fucking young recruits. Because like, we are me and me and my buddy already fucking knew, you know these kids these kids fucking didn't necessarily all know yet what they were getting into. You know what I mean? And so like that's that's how you make it through basic training sometimes, you know. And I apologize once again. I gotta go let the dogs in now. I no, you're good. Right no, I actually <laughs> apologize because I've been talking so much. We're at thirty four fucking minutes. It's been a busy week, you know. And uh, I. So to end kind of like my week in review so that Jay could go on to his roadhouse, I started playing the Red Dead Redemption 2 on PC 
but instead of playing like the 5M servers that we normally do for um, for GTA, which are actually kind of fun, I went into the roleplay servers for Red Dead Redemption. Oh, there, there's our guest star right there. The oh, dog. You're gonna have to move over, dude. You're gonna have to move over, dude. Hey! Hey! Oh. Oh. You heard I don't wanna sit on sit on my buddy here. Yeah, so I Red Dead Redemption roleplay servers are actually kind of interesting. I know, I know, Strawbridge. Listen, sometimes me, me and Jay switch off, switch off episodes. Sometimes he talks a lot. Sometimes I do. It just, it just happens. Red Dead Redemption Two roleplay servers. You get to be a fucking cowboy. You get to play the game in a different way. I haven't dived too much into it, but I certainly like. I certainly love kidnapping people, hog tying them up onto onto the train, and then having an admin come up to me and be like, "What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> what, what, what are you doing, dude? This is like." You're doing it wrong, John. Like you're just why? doing it wrong. Like, like, no, like stop. And it's like what? he's pulling his cock out. I don't, you know, and <laughs> I'm just there, like, hey man, I'm just, I'm just a cowboy. I'm just doing my thing. But guy, you know, it's pretty fun. Um, I, I really, you know, I like, I like going into these games and learning that there's more to the game, especially when it's modded and you don't have to mod it at all. Yeah, absolutely. I, I wouldn't know. I would hope that the game is already modded because I wouldn't have the first clue what I was doing. And and now to the the mother lover himself. Fuck what yeah, you got bro. Go, what, what was what was your one sixty eight like? Uh, it was okay. Uh, we had kind of like a semi regular week, I guess, if you want to call it that. Um, we did a couple things. Um, I I I. Uh, work, I worked a few times, so I will definitely have something for the Roadhouse. As far as, like, you know, arts entertainment or anything we did for the week, um, we didn't do a whole lot, but uh, we did visit some friends uh, yesterday. So we kind of had, like, a family get-together, you know, barbecue. We, we mostly stayed inside and talked, obviously, because it's very hot in Missouri right now. Um, but uh, they were two of my friends from the Army that actually live here in Kansas City, and... and uh, um, so uh, one of them was a, uh, I served in the same, uh, well, both of them actually I served in the same battalion with, and then one of them, uh, was in a circle of friends, a very close circle of friends I had when I was a mechanic at Fort Leonard Wood, uh, prior to my reclass. So we just did a lot of catching up. Um, uh, she just had, she just, uh, recently, uh, had, a, had their first baby. Um, and so like, it's just, it's really cool, man. So like, you have a lot, a lot of love in the house and, uh, you know, fighting fifth, dude. That's fifth engineers, right? So I got to say fighting fifth, dude. So, cool. so yeah, that was cool. We did that. And then as far as like movies and shit, um, so we, we, we've kind of started a tradition where uh, I review movies that have been out for a while. Um, Nikki, Nikki is very wary about any of my movie selections because I have a very like hit and miss track record with her, right? She, she usually does pretty good where like with most movies she picks for, for me to watch. <laughs> Cody, oh my God, dude! Will you stop? Sounds like he's got something Cody to gets say. very territorial. Cody gets territorial about his freaking bed and freaking Cody. Just stop, dude. He's, he's he just he acts like a dick sometimes. You know what I mean? He gets bored. Poor guy is bored. Ah, uh, yeah. I'll have to take him for a. I'll have to take him both for a ride later. We'll see. If you're good, yeah. But uh, no. Uh, so um, but last night I think I picked a winner. Um, so. Uh, my oldest was over spending the night at a friend's house, so me and Ni and Nikki and my youngest uh, watched uh, Gangs of New York. Uh, and, ye and yes, I made my youngest hide her eyes a couple times, don't worry. But uh, it's a great movie, dude. Like, holy fucking shit. Like, I I've seen it before. I fucking, I, you know, it's it's a Scorsese flick. It's a fucking love letter to New York. You know, uh, it's it's a period piece. It's a historical drama set in the, uh, the, the preceding uh portion uh like 1846 like in the in the run-up to uh the civil war and then the, the main part of the movie takes place in 1862 uh in and around the time of the uh the new york draft riots um and the and the events uh preceding that some of the characters some of the characters in this movie are based on actual historical people and then other other characters uh such as the ones played by uh, leonardo dicaprio and cameron diaz are uh not based on really anything historical they just kind of used it for the storyline uh, great movie. I love seeing John C. Uh, uh, John C. O'Reilly in that movie as like the corrupt ass cop, you know, that fought on the side of the dead rabbits at the beginning, and then like turns into a corrupt ass cop at the end. Good morning, Deshaun. Because uh, hey, Deshaun, what's up, man? 
freaking uh, dude. You've seen uh, what's that? Uh, Talladega Nights, right? Yeah. Okay, right. So it's like shake and bake, man. Shake and bake, right? I just love like that dude's in that dude's in Gangs in New York, and I just like watching him like play like a like first he plays like an at the very beginning he plays like this ass kicker of a fucking man in the fucking original Riot where like Leonardo DiCaprio's dad gets fucking schwacked, which is played by Liam Neeson, by the way. Um, and then he turns into a fucking like just a fat a fathead cop dude, just being a fucking corrupt piece of shit. And he gets fucking like hung up like a fucking Christmas decoration on a fucking lamppost, you know, by the end of the movie, right? So that shit's fucking oh, Diamond Rock RP jacked up on Mountain Dew. Boy, you guys must be having a great time. At no least, at least, at least it's not Mountain. At least it's Mountain Dew and not come. I, I, fucking, how about like pour some cocaine into that shit and act like a man? Come on now, Mountain Dew. Did it's you like, see the dude. news about cocaine this week? No, what is it? Uh, the cartel's hiding them in potatoes. Nice. Well played, cartel. Well played. Well played. It's a. It's almost. It's almost like all we could do is, you know, the, the only thing we'd have to do is like I don't know, like legalize shit and federally regulate and tax it. You know, we already have the Food and Drug Administration in place to kind of do that, and then like cartels would have like, I don't know, not really much shit to fucking sell anymore. I'm just spitballing here. Do you think the gangs you know? in New York had cocaine? Oh fuck yeah, they did. I know they did. They had all that shit. They had fucking cocaine, laudanum, fucking cannabis, dude, cannabis shit, oil, dude. Laudanum. He said they had laudanum. fucking, dude. They had, they had fuck, yeah, laudanum. They had fucking heroin, and you could go to the fucking. They had tinctures. They had tinctures, which were like basically like uh like a mix. It would be a mix of like two or three different fucking drugs. Morning, ben. ben. Like, bro, I need that fentanyl. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. god. Diamond <laughs> rock. Night night, night night. Like, daddy, like, chill. <laughs> Ben Davies, Ben Davies from across the pond. Welcome, welcome, brother. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you. We got, we got yeah. nothing but uniforms up in here. Yo, it's a fucking, it's a party today, homie. It's a party today, dude. So, but yeah, so you know, Gangs New York, great fucking flick. Highly recommend. Nikki liked it. Freaking, it was a, you know all around good movie. I love the part at the end when you know when they're talking about. Uh, you know, kind of just like eventually everything gets forgotten and they're showing like the New York skyline kind of get built as the graves kind of get overgrown and forgotten. You know what I mean? And it's like, it doesn't matter like how big, how big you are in, in your life, how, how larger than life you are in your world. 10 out of 10 people fucking die, homie. So fucking use the fucking one, use the one life you got to fucking spread some love and cheer around. You know what I mean? Like, that's all I can say, dude. By the way, though. As, mu- as big of a fucking asshole as he was in that movie, Bill the Butcher, dude, is one of the most compelling fucking characters, like, in, like, movie history. Yeah, yeah. Holy Iconic fucking shit. character. Holy fucking Daniel Day-Lewis, dude. Like, what in the fuck? Like, yeah, God, and Sh- dude. And Shorebridge fucking- says it here. He was a badass motherfucker in that. Oh, dude, holy fucking shit. Like, he's fucking quoting, quoting the Bible to a fucking politician to fucking basically tell him, like, dude, I, I wouldn't fucking wipe my ass with you. So you can fucking get out of my sight, and if I ever see you again, fucking you're done. You know what I mean? Like, quoting the Bible, telling, he was quoting Jesus, actually, out of the fucking New Testament, when he said, I'll fucking spew you out of my mouth because you're neither fucking hot nor cold. You're lukewarm. You know? Like, that's fucking some devastatingly fucking scary shit, if you know what the fuck he's talking about. You know what I mean? So how many inches does this movie have? I'm going to give Gangs of New York a very, very solid, like, especially upon a rewatch, I'm gonna give it a fucking solid like. We're gonna go eight and a half, nine on this. Ooh, one, that's okay? girthy. So it's girth. It's girthy. It's got length. It's gonna fucking rearrange your guts and scramble your fucking ovaries. Okay, like it's gonna fuck you up a little bit if you take a fucking pounding from it, dude. Okay, it, you're gonna you're gonna walk a little funny for a fucking day or two. Okay, great fucking movie, dude. Great fucking movie. So yeah, that would be that. So I yeah, to, that I was. To, I have to agree with Showbiz. Daniel Day Lewis is like probably he he's done a lot of good fucking shit like yeah yeah so is it uh is it time oh is it's time for the roadhouse there we go there we go Jazz well partners upbeat. why don't you let that smoke finish drifting from the end of your irons put them on your hip walk with me through these here saloon doors it's been 168 hours my friends let's take another trip to the roadhouse all right this week 
The J worked a couple times, but uh, we're not going to really worry about the ball games too much uh, or anything else. This week, Jay signed up for a fucking 80s reunion stadium tour thing I'm a Bob. And I got to do I got to do I got to do security. I got to do security at Kauffman Stadium for fucking Joan Jett and the Blackhearts, Poison, Botley Crew, and fucking Def Leppard. Alright? In that order. Alright? Now let me tell you something, dude. Oh by and by the way, if you're wondering like where I was or proximity wise, I was on the fucking barrier as I usually am. I was on the barrier. And I was basically like extreme stage left. So like so way off of fucking like if you're facing the stage, I would have been way to the left side, if that makes sense. Like, not even, I really wasn't even close to, like, where they, the stage was, if that makes sense. Like, where they would walk out, like, kind of, like, into the crowd, into the crowd, kind of, sort of, right? I was about freaking probably, like, 50 feet away from that. All right? But I was in, I was definitely in, like, direct proximity and at the very front, if that makes sense. So, <sighs> are you ready, John? Are you ready for this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. I was going into this show fully expecting just I was I'll tell you first first and foremost the only one I was really truly looking forward to like I, and I and I mean this sincerely and in no in no means like in in a way of disrespect or any of the other bands the only one I was really looking forward to from the get go was fucking Joan Jett I have always wanted to see that lady play um I she's always been just very humble very fucking talented amazing lady dude like all the fucking interviews I've ever watched with her she is just the most down to earth badass broad that like one you know at least one of one of the few that the 70s produced dude that she that that lady has never once just turned her back or sold out or fucking anything she is fucking uh, just an amazing wonderful lady and you know what she fucking produced in spades man so just being able to say that i got to see fucking Joan Jett and the Blackhearts dude was fucking really cool okay oh yeah oh, Re- yeah really fucking cool as far as the other three bands as much as I went into it, really just not expecting much, they didn't do too bad. Um, I'm gonna give like I'm gonna give special props to fucking Poison because I really didn't, I don't really know what I expected uh, watching Poison about 30 years after their heyday. But I gotta say, Brett Michaels, uh, the front man, like really impressed me. Seeing CC Deville play guitar was fucking amazing. Okay, um, and Brett My- Bre- Brett Michaels is is came off as very grateful, very, very humble, and just very happy to interact and and uh, hang with the crowd. And that was really cool to see. So even if I'm not the, the world's biggest fucking Poison fan, I, I, you know, I'm sitting there at the concert, and I'm like trying to think of like maybe a couple of funny jokes to make about each of the bands or whatever. And I was like, fuck, man, this is just, it'd be like low-hanging fruit, number one. And number two, like, the dude just seemed like he came off as very genuine, very, very genuine guy. You know what I mean? Like, this is probably not the guy you remember from like the, the if you if you're into like those trashy reality shows. I know he's done a couple of them. Yeah. Uh, this is yeah. this is not the guy on those shows. Like the guy that the guy that was playing on the stage uh, on Tuesday here in Kansas City was not the guy in those shows, dude. Like he was just a very very cool. Seemed like a very he's the kind of guy I just fucking sit down and have a fucking beer and go fishing with. You know what I mean? He like, was he that, was where he needed to be the person that he is. What people originally know him as. I agree. That he he seems to, he seems to have gone very much back back to his like his roots and his home and like I really can't knock a motherfucker for that because like look where I'm fucking sitting right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's I I got nothing. So props to Poison. Like they definitely did a lot better than I was anticipating. And Brett Michaels, dude, like very genuine, very humble dude. Motley Crue. Oh boy, was, Motley Crue. Was Tommy Lee playing with them? Tommy Lee was fucking there, bro. Tommy Lee was definitely fucking. I got to see Tommy Lee play guitar, or excuse me, drums. I got to see motherfucking Nikki Six play fucking guitar. That fucking living skeleton that plays bass for them. <laughs> What's his name, dude? He's fucking still alive. So fucking, he's uh, they they did they did all right. And I know everybody's seen a lot of freaking videos from like I think they, a lot of videos were circulating on the internet from like last year, and uh, when when Motley Crue started playing again and Nikki or uh, Vince Neil just being a out of shape and a little out of breath, right? Playing. He's gotten better. I would still not say it's quite up to Motley Crue standard par, right? But he's definitely lost weight. He, I would say easily from last year, some of the videos that I've seen on the internet, the dude's lost at least 30 pounds, guaranteed. Mm. Minimum. Minimum 30 nice. pounds. 
Well, he, he's one. Of, he's one of. He's one of those dudes where, like, when he gains weight, he he gains it all like in his in his in his torso. It is like above the waist, basically. So you could you you could see a marked difference in his torso region from like the videos I've seen with some of the really really just not good singing. You know, that came out like last year when they first started touring again. You know yeah. what I mean? And he did better, and you can tell he's actually trying. And the whole band actually they played really well. Uh, I'm actually going to give negative points to my freaking fellow Kansas Cityans, man. Ladies, when you go to a Motley Crue concert, like, what are we supposed to do here? Okay, Tommy Lee had to come out from behind his fucking drum set and cajole the crowd just so we could get some fucking titty action, bro. <laughs> this is Motley fucking crew, Kansas City. Where are them fucking juggies at, bro? Well, Tommy Lee is also living in the moment because that show just came out and the Winter Soldier played him and the talking penis. I, the whole, I'm just disappointed in my fellow Kansas Cityans, man. Like, <laughs> you go you go to a crew concert, man. You should literally, you should you should be swimming in just a sea of titties, dude. Right? Like, because that's how it used to be. And it's just like, man, it's definitely 2022, and these guys have definitely been playing for fucking 41 years. Because, there, like, we finally got some juggy action, like, after freaking uh, Tommy Lee cajoled the crowd, okay? So they, they, they had the camera, you know, they put it up on the big screen, you know? So, like, some of the little seven- and eight-year-olds, you know, got you know got to see, like, their first freaking, like, real uh, re real real uh, real jugs for the first time in their lives, you know, at, at the Motley Crue concert, you know? So good for them. That's always an experience, I'm you know? I'm in danger! <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, you are. And I got I gotta say for for the ladies that uh, definitely uh, uh, answered Tommy Lee's call, mad props, ladies, mad props. Those were definitely some 100% USDA grade A prime beef. It's the 80 Kansas safe City, mode. Kansas City titties, dude. Like those were fucking beautiful, ladies. Thank you very very much. Thank you. All right. Uh, overall, Motley Crue, they did all right. Couple of songs. Couple of songs definitely. Could have been better, I guess, but I think they're trying, and they're trying harder. Uh, getting to see Tommy Lee play drums, Nikki Six on guitar, Skeletor on fucking bass, and Vince Neil, cool, you know, awesome, right? And then fucking to wrap it up, this was this was the most probably impressive part of the night. Fucking Def Leppard, dude. God damn it, dude. And holy fucking shit, this band came out and just absolutely wrecked shop. And they, they usually just, do. they went hard. They went fucking hard from the fucking first song to the goddamn finale, dude. They barely took any breaks. When they took a break, it was like a minute, you know, long enough to fucking get a drink of water, catch their breath and fucking come right back out and play like their last three or four songs or whatever they did at the end. You know what I mean? It was literally like, fuck yeah, bro. Fuck yeah. You know? And, uh. Let me get his name, because his name always escapes me. Give, give me one second here, and yes, let me sir. look it up. Fucking one moment. All right. Okay, Rick Allen. Rick Allen on drums, dude. Rick Allen is the very famous one-armed drummer from, Le from, from Def Leppard, okay? Holy shit. Fucking getting to see him. Getting to see him fucking play. I got to, see, play I got to see them play once in Pittsburgh years ago when I was like a kid. Well, apparently they've got a new fucking album, and they goddamn, um, they plugged it, obviously, but they played a couple songs off of their new album, and those fucking songs weren't fucking bad. They were kind of bangers, dude, and I was like, fuck. Like, I might have to check out fucking Def Leppard's new fucking album here. You, you know what I mean? Might. I just might. I just might. That's what I'm like. I was like, holy shit. Like, fucking A, Def Leppard, dude. Like, mad props, dude. So, so yeah, that was basically it. Crowd was fucking, crowd was kind of meh, but... In Kansas City's defense here, it was Tuesday. The, the concert started at 4.30 in the afternoon. Oh, wow. It, it was hot as fuck, And it was bro. a long day. It was a long day going well into the night. Yeah. Um, Jay was fucking energy sapped for about two days afterwards because I was literally standing at the barrier for about seven hours straight. About seven hours straight. I you, had, you couldn't wait I, for that sun to go down. Pretty much, dude. Well, I freaking... I did. I did take a break. I, I, I took a piss break, you know, and I, I I was pounding water the entire fucking time. So I mean, I was hydrated. I was okay, but man, fucking Wednesday and Thursday, bro. Like, yeah, I'm definitely fucking 41 years old and not in the army anymore. Cause like, that shit took it out of me, dude. This week, so I gotta fucking start uh, going jogging again or something, dude. Cause yeah, that fucking sun fucking sat my fucking 
sat my fucking ball bag for a couple days afterwards. Dude, well, you, so. well, you look a little more Arizonian than normal, so. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. I'm, I'm getting that bronze. That, that bronze, that, that 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 construction bronze is coming back into my fucking Construction bronze. Dude. Yeah, for what I like when I used to work construction all the time. Yeah, fucking. I used. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, fucking. So that was uh, that was Jay's Roadhouse. I hope you guys enjoyed. And fucking saddle up next week, partners, and we'll have another fucking yeah. story for you in another 168. Hua. And a couple things before we get into our, our main segment here. Um, two things. Since we're talking about music, I actually read recently, CC DeVille was actually offered half ownership of Megadeth years ago. Mm -hmm. If he had joined the band and there was like this I, whole thing about it and CC was just like are you fucking stupid like like who, who the fuck are you <laughs> and that the same it was offered to someone else and I forgot who it was offered to but then like so, somewhere along the line the story led to Dimebag Daryl Abbott mm -hmm. becoming who he became. And and yeah, you know for those we've talked about this before Pantera when they first started out they were a hair they were band. Her, they were they a were fucking hair, hair band. Yeah. yeah. And what's very interesting, and I'm talking about this because, uh, you know, we, 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 there are some music that we do enjoy, that, that we do have in common. We, we both have said we're fans of Phil and Salmo's music, like Super Joint Ritual, um, yep. Down, which, yep. which I think Down is probably the, the not, yep. I don't want to say like his worst band, but my least favorite of his incarnations. I think, that, I think, I think that's probably, you know, for a lot of people, like that's a fair, and I also know people that would say the same about Super Joint. You know, yeah. they would flip that. They would flip that and say super joint, you know, and it's and in you and know I've and, seen and especially all three. go ahead. I've seen all three. Oh, badass, dude. Good for you. Yeah, I've seen Good all three. You. In fact, I saw Super Joint Ritual and Down perform at Ozfest one day. Fuck yeah, dude. Good yeah, shit. That, man. that was I, pretty interesting. And I saw Pantera when I was I a used, kid. I used to own both I used to own both of Super Joint's albums, like when they were out. You know what I mean? They were and, great like, albums. They fucking were. You use once and destroy and then uh a lethal dose of yeah. American hatred. A lethal dose of American hatred was my favorite one of their of their albums. But but uh, I'm I'm talking about this because Pantera's coming back. I, I don't know if you've been following the news about that. And yeah, it's gonna be uh, Phil 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 uh, Phil and Samuel, um, Zach Wild, Zach Wild on guitars and plays so Dime Dime and uh, Rex Brown obviously still playing bass. Yeah. Now and then who, who's who's the drummer? Do you remember who the drummer was? Um, I can't. I look him up right now. I saw Phil. I saw Phil and Samo when he played when he was with the um... Charlie Benante. He uh, he's from Anthrax. He's the drummer of Anthrax. Okay, got you, yeah. got you. Which and and hey, I'm. I don't think that they've could have picked better people for the for the job. You know, I. If you want to bring back Pantera, that's. I mean, when when I saw Phil and Samo play in 2019. Uh, oh God. You know, Phil and Tom and the, and the Illegals, mm -hmm. freaking. That's uh, they opened up for fucking Slayer. Uh, when I saw Slayer in Colorado Springs in 2019, so, you know, and that and basically like he he sang mostly Pantera songs, right? So it's like if that's, if you're just gonna basically get the band back together as much as possible, and then have a couple of replacements for freaking for Diamond, uh, um, oh my fucking god, um, uh, Vinny Paul, yeah, you know what I mean, like fucking. Then do it. I, I don't. I don't know that I'll go see it, but whatever. We'll oh yeah, see. same here. I mean, I like I said, I don't think they could have picked better people for the job, but it's still fucking weird, you know. But but I will say that there has been confirmation that throughout the years, Vinnie Paul always said and has spoken to Zach Wild about bringing Pantera back, and that Zach Wild would have always been that replacement. So if there's any, if there's any, you know. If, it kind well, of Zach, Zach Wild has his own fucking entire music his musical history, basically. Jersey like in bread, rock. Jersey dead, motherfuckers. Anyways, um, we got a pretty decent conversation I want to talk to you about. So we, we're gonna talk about the podcast today. We're gonna talk about the progression and stuff like that. Okay. It'll, it'll be quick conversation. Just some things I want to put out there. Um. Unbeknownst to you, I looked at the, some of our numbers on Spotify. In the last seven days on Spotify, we've had 293 starts, 186 streams, and in total, we have 65 listeners and 24 followers on Spotify alone, with New Zealand leading the charge on Spotify. New Zealand? New Zealand. Holy fucking shit, dude. That's badass, yeah. dude. Like, 
I'm gonna have to do fucking. I'm gonna have to do a fucking chewy like next week or something. Like shit. Dude, ne- well, what? Next week's our 69th episode, right? Yes, it is. Of this episode 69, yeah, episode next 69, week. So, yeah, nice. Fucking so yeah, I'll have to do a fucking chewy for New New Zealand fucking next week. How about that? There we go. And and man, like, what's very interesting about all this, like, so like. It's just so cool because I look at the numbers every now. I try not to look at the numbers because, like, I kind of just like kind of let them sit. And and man, like some of the things that I I see on here, I would have never even thought. Like like our followers bar. Like I'm just gonna show this to you. Do you see that? I believe that's, so. That's all pink. That's that just mean? rise. There's not even a downfall. It's just rise. I don't know how to. I, I'm not. I'm not sure really how to how to interpret the graph. So you see how like these graphs go up and down, up and down. Yeah. This one doesn't. This one goes straight through. I'm not good at math like this. Oh no, it's not math. It's just saying that people are listening. <laughs> you know, pe- people people are cool. listening. Hey, princess. You know, um, select the trailer. Oh, I guess we're gonna have to do a trailer for this show soon. And it, it's just, it's so cool to see this stuff, to see that people are, are listening to the show and watching the show on YouTube, uh, you know, where, where, wherever it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it, it's been really fun and to know that this is happening and that it's out there. It sure. just It says to me, hey, it's time to, to expand it. It's time it's time to start expanding the the work here and i know season three we had a lot of prospects and you know with all with all new with all new branches there's always a couple of leaves that fall out right so right you know we you know it's it's no secret that we've had a loss of people on the show it's no secret that we've had ups and downs but we've had more ups than we've had downs and i think that in saying that you know the group itself the facebook group itself is clean you know and when i say clean i i mean like no strikes, no issues, no problems. Um, we haven't, we, you know, we don't have any issues with racism or jackasses or, or, or you know, uh, all that stuff. Like we, we've been, are, we have a good community of people that, you know, not only are a part of this show, but also a part of something much bigger behind the scenes. It's, it's, it's just nice to know that it's there, and it's nice to know that. You know, I, I, you know who Jesus and Mero are? Uh, that, why is that, it was ringing a bell. So they called each other the Bodega Boys. They were working for like over 20 years. They started together kind of like how we did, right? And mm-hmm. after a long time, they just split a couple, just a couple days ago due to creative differences. And uh-huh. I, you know, I was watching a lot of reactions about this and how, you know, and I, and I kind of compared the two to me and you because, you know, you know, we're, we're friends, you know? And one thing that really stood out to me that one comedian, Andrew Schultz, says is just like we have to make sure that we don't we, that we're not friend that we, that we don't make friends because of the work that we that we're friends because we're friends, you know. Right. And I and in saying that, I just want to say that I've been very grateful for you coming here every single fucking week, talking shit, you know, kissing ass, you know. And and it, it's so cool because it's this is special. We are the only military and gaming podcast in the world the only yes we are okay there's no one who does it like us there's no one who does it better than us we are not the underdogs here okay i we we you know we've we've been able to to break foundation build ground on top of it foundation broke we built the foundation up again and now we're just standing here you know and you know it's it's you know, you're starting to see some of the algorithm, like on YouTube. You see the algorithm on Anchor, on Spotify, and Apple, and you see us in there. We haven't hit the charts yet, and that's fine. You know, and I'm completely okay with that. I'm just happy to know that it's going. I am too, and I, I definitely want to say thank you to everybody that takes any time out of their life to to listen to us. Or if you get bored, or you just happen to stumble across us, um, we say it. We say it all the time. Uh, we hope you enjoy it. If you don't, move the fuck on. Like seriously, like that, that's that's all we've ever said, and that's all we're ever gonna say. So we we hope you enjoy, and if you do, by all means, please stay. And we we love to uh, entertain and uh, enjoy our time with you. Uh, if you think we're sophomoric and stupid and immature, uh, a you're probably right, and b get the fuck out. <laughs> like 
Later. You know what's the fun? Uh, you know what's the fun part of all this, though? What's that? Uh, we we talk a lot. We do. We, we do. We talk a lot. Like we could do. We could do a six-hour show. Like nothing. If we really wanted to, but man, I, that's exhausting. Yeah. No. I got. I. I'm gonna need you to. I'm gonna need you to hold hold the uh, hold the air for a couple seconds here. I, I need to call my oldest real quick. Okay. Oh boy. I'm so sorry. I'm getting I'm getting blown up on my phone. So I'll, I will be <laughs> I will be right back. <laughs> he, he, it's Spotify. It's Spotify. At offering a contract, guys. That's what it is. I know, right? <laughs> hey, uh, no, go what, do you think? You, I... you got a couple commercials or anything today? Like, I actually, now might, you know what? Now let's, might be a good time. Let's so get, let's get some commercials going. We'll get the commercials going right now. Um. All right, and uh, where is my guys? We'll be right back, right after this. Alcoholics! That's the drinking straight. Alcoholics. What's up? For real, motherfuckers. You being marketed at? A combination of everything that makes a memorable evening. Malt liquor and caffeine. Malt liquor. Malt liquor, caffeine. Janky than a motherfucker. It's just a little cuckoo boy. It's a good time blackout in a can. What's up? You blacking out, asshole. I'm blacking out. Alcoholic keeps the party going. Even if you won't remember any of it. That's what's up. Everything in your car, from talking to friends to watching a movie to turning tricks with a coworker. So why should you get out of your car to eat? At Up and Adam, we're from a time when America didn't worry about global warming, cholesterol, or who could vote. Drive into Up and Adam today. Up and Adam, food from when we were morally superior. Women, dieting is so hard. There are lots of delivery diets that deliver food each day, but don't stop you from cheating. Isn't it time you try something just a little different? At Vinewood Health, we not only give you the carrot, we also give you the stick. Our trained counselors spend the day with you to offer the guidance and reassurance to keep you on the right track. You're gonna eat that? You fucking pig! You disgust me! With their firm but encouraging guidance, the true thinner you will soon emerge. Paranoid, neurotic, and the proud owner of a new food disorder. You have to associate food with pain and a beating. <laughs> food is your enemy! Defeat it! You have no self-control. Thanks to us, all you need is self-loathing. Vinewood Health. Beauty inside and out. Or your money back. You fat! Contact Vinewood Health today. We all care about the environment, some more than others, especially those of us on the West Coast. But places thousands of miles away have water that is our birthright. We're San Andreas Water and Power. Without our tireless efforts to keep the water and subsidies flowing, San Andreas could dry up like a woman in her 50s. No green lawns, no swimming pools, no lush golf courses in the desert. Sure, you may have to pay the piper sometime, but let's all work together to make sure it's not just yet. San Andreas Water and Power. The video game of the year. Roger that, Bravo Sierra. We've got some insurgents killing orphans, and they've got some nerve toxin and a nuke and a random flashback level in which JFK and Castro do get out on the moon. Righteous Slaughter 7. Copy that, Red Leader. Call in the airstrike. Righteous Slaughter 7. The realistic art of contemporary killing. How do you kill? Rated PG. Pretty much the same as the last game. We back? All right. Yes, we are. All right. So, yeah, man. Uh, all in all, I'm just saying, guys, thank you so much. It's so cool. I mean, uh, 
It's pretty motivating, so thank you. Uh, we got a little bit of news here to kind of to finish it off. Uh, where, All right. Where's my fucking... I, I got I to do something. You know, I need to screen some of these commercials, and I need to screen these damn buttons. He needs yeah. some milk! All right, I got it. I'll get the milk. I'll get, I'll get the milk, yeah. right? Yeah, we've... Jesus, uh, we, we... Jesus Christ. <laughs> We've uh, we've talked we've talked over the last couple of weeks about uh, what, what do we say like kind of condensing, condensing a little bit and maybe uh, yeah 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 we'll, we'll figure it out we'll figure it out yeah I mean well I just want to say guys just be prepared because we're the, the best of DD two fourteen gaming podcast is coming this year really okay I still have the footage that I was working on last year to try to release it last year. Uh -huh. I'm going to release it this year. It's going to be a 60-minute piece, and you guys are going to love every bit of it. Cool. Are we are we going to add sound effects and music, or like what like what are we going to do? I'm going to try to figure it out. The, but okay. The, but actually, this is why I wanted to talk too, because um, for those I want to expand the team, guys. I want to expand the team. What do you have? What do you have that could help? Um, invigorate our group to to put up more content. What what do you have? Talk to us. Write to us. I'm I'm, I'm I don't know about you, Jay, but I'm ready to start to to start helping out others, man. I think we've you know we we've been very would, you know we have a great support with us, and I think it's time yeah. to bring some of those guys under our wing. I think we should, and I think uh, there's a as I've said many many times uh, previously, there's a lot of people in our community that I know do a lot more actual gaming than I do. You know what I mean? Um, so there's uh, there's people out there that can put our name out there and assist us with that as part of the community. I would love to see video game teams using us as a sponsor. You know what I mean? I would and love like, that too. you know, shit like that, where it's like, go go play your fucking tournament, like sponsored by fucking DD two fourteen gaming, dude, like. Just fucking let's like let's support each other. Let's fucking put it out there. You know what I mean? Like we're here, we're here for each other. So we we can we only we can only do as much as we do for each other. Cool. You know what I mean? So so yeah. And now to the. the uh, so the first thing we got in news, uh, I got it right here in my notepad. Splinter Cell VR has been canceled, ladies and gentlemen. Canceled. Jay, have you ever played the uh, Splinter Cell back in the day? Uh, no. No. Okay. Well, Splinter <laughs> Cell is a Tom, is a Tom Clancy espionage spy game. It is a classic game, very exciting. I suggest you go back, go back in time a little bit, and you play some of those games, which you can find some of them probably on Game Pass. Really I remember some of my friends played played those games. I yeah. remember that. So I've I've seen it. I've seen the game played. I just I never. I never owned it and I never played it. Yeah, so. Splinter Cell was a very fun game. I would have been very excited to see what a Splinter Cell VR game would have looked like, though. You know, a that would be cool. I mean, the, the V. Well, you you just got a touch of VR just a couple weeks ago, so it's uh, you know, you you, you so you can say something about this. So, it, is a spy espionage game a game you would like to play in virtual reality, Jay? Well, I think there's a, a multitude of games that the dynamics would change. Uh, drastically and immediately by playing that type of you know that type of game in in VR. So whether you're playing a game where you have to like creep around like a ninja or a spy, or whether you're doing like a run and gun a run and gun type game, um, yeah, I mean there's there's a, a multitude of of different things I guess. So Absolutely. that's kind of like yeah, that's kind of like uh, you know I, I, I'm waiting for some type of a uh, either rotating or some type of like a treadmill that is like multi-directional so that you can kind of like strap into like a harness around your waist. Oh, they have that already. So that way you can actually like move your feet. They already have that. Oh yeah, it exists. Hmm. Well, there you go. So I guess we're going to get the Oculus so I can stay up on my training. I got you right now. It's a thousand bucks. Mm-hmm. What is it like? It's that. And it I, just keeps you in place, and you you can actually run yep, in the game. Yep. It's it, look. It's got the harness exactly like you said. I, you would have to, yeah. You would absolutely have yeah. to. Yeah. And, and the, the only problem that I see with that though is, can you crouch? Yeah, you can. So these okay. so these things right here, they bend. There's like okay. a there's like a hinge in between these things here. Okay. <laughs> 
that's a that's so, yeah. a, that's an investment that I think would help me with my VR. To be honest with you, I I've said already many times. I think VR is definitely the way of kind of the way of the future, not only in gaming but like <laughs> getting getting exercise getting exercise in your fucking basement. You know what I mean? Um, just do, you know, uh, we talked about uh, learning um, you know base level you know tasks and skills in real life. You yeah. know what I mean? VR can be, VR can be used for that before you actually try try shit in real life, you know what I mean? Like you, you get the the mechanics down of how shit works before you fucking before you fucking actually do it in real life, you know what I mean? And get that on the job shit going, you know what I mean? I can see I can see VR tech absolutely making humanity kind of a better place. Like you know, and then there's other things you can use it for that are a little bit scarier but uh also fun. So surgery, fuck yes. Fuck yes, Stobridge, fucking same same. Fucking surgery. Yeah, I was I was going I was going more in the direction of like entering and clearing fucking rooms and buildings, but you know, same same. In VR, <laughs> well, they got they got games like that in VR already. Yeah, I th- well, and I think it's one of those things where like as as the technology impresses, or, excuse me, in, in, increases and and in, in improves. Um, I think what we're going to see is a marked improvement on the skills and the skill levels that you might have to have uh, in those virtual environments. But that you will have to have a certain level of, you know, whatever, as as a person, like the person playing it, you know what I mean. So you're gonna have to like you're gonna have to like seriously like be in decent shape, you know, run a co- you know, cover cover the infantry quarter mile while shooting, you know, three to five second rushes, you know, getting up on a berm, fucking taking out targets, fucking rushing the fucking target, you know, securing the fucking objective, you know, clearing the objective, you know, all that shit. Absolutely. Like, so yeah. Yeah, and um, I got other news here. This is breaking news. Ubisoft reportedly planning to already cancel new multiplayer game. Um, Roller Champions, which was actually a game that I was actually uh, looking at. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Wow, it was a 3v3 sports-centric multiplayer title. Where, and while the release of Roller Champions is something that was a long time coming, it sounds like Ubisoft has already given up on the project, so... Ubisoft has done it again, ladies and gentlemen. They've given up once again. Surprise, not surprise. Freaking lose, losers gonna lose, right? Losers sure. gonna lose. I also I have a game here that I want to show you. Okay. Um, it's a very interesting game. It's called Scorn, and c- can you see all that? In fact, let me. There you go. Yeah, I can see that. So it's a game that's in hell. Nice. I like where you're going with it. You know, so this was actually a new game that I just found on the Game Pass that's coming to Game Pass. And once it comes out, you'll be able to play it. You could probably pre-install it now. But, uh, yeah, the game takes place in hell. Where's the scene? There's a scene here where, like, something's, like, connected. Looks like some fun. It looks like a H.R. Geiger's version of hell right there. It's like, you know, the guy, the guy that designed the alien is a really famous German artist. Okay. HR Ge- that looks like HR Geiger's version of hell. Yeah, it's um uh, I mean it looks scary as shit. It looks scary as shit. I'm trying to see what other Well shit, dude. That looks like it looks like a fun place for me, dude. Like, that's well that's like... a game that's a game that I think that you would that you would enjoy. I'm trying to like, hey look everybody, I'm home. <laughs> like Yeah. You know, but uh the game is called Scorn. It comes out um holiday twenty twenty two. Um, also in news, uh, GTA 6 setting possibly leaked by GTA Online, which is horseshit because people are just looking at fucking dialogue and script from the game and thinking, oh my god, that's what it's gotta be. So, the, the clip in question is a clip with the, with the DJ, a real life DJ named Dixon, in the game, uh-huh. and he says something about 1981, and... The rumors keep on saying, okay, it's gonna, the game is gonna play, the game's gonna be in the 1980s. We, we've heard this rumor many times. But why is it that whenever someone is looking at a GTA thing and they look at something, that, first off, the game is so big, you're gonna find things that you haven't found. And so they're looking at this quote and they're just like, oh my god, it, it, it's gotta be it. GTA 6, 1981. Da, 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 da. And, and, and I'm like, can you stop? Like, that, that is I the most, like, now, we saw, we saw a very descriptive leak list mm-hmm. just a couple weeks ago. Yeah, the different music and shit. The different music, some of the settings, uh, the characters uh, that, that were supposedly supposed to be a part of the game. 
and that mm-hmm. stuff is like believable, you know. Uh, but when sure. you have like a stupid little piece of dialogue that like this, it's like, uh, you know. No, yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not going to buy that the game. Like, first off, Vice City already happened, and that was set in the fucking '80s. And then, as, as much as Rockstar has really just shown their asses, you know, basically since fucking <laughs> GTA Five and gave fucking, up on Red Dead Redemption Two Online. Gave, Gave, yeah, I completely just gave the fuck up on Red Dead Redemption 2 online. Like, that's a fucking travesty in and of itself. Like, they, first for, first and foremost, I want to say fucking Rockstar can suck our dicks. Okay, like, that I want to make unequivocally clear. Like, you guys... You guys took, like, one of the very last good guy companies, and, and you fucking, like... And you just pile-drived it into the fucking pavement, dude. Like, so good, jo- good job on just ruining your, your own fucking good reputation. So far, as far as GTA 6 is concerned... Are we looking forward to it? I guess. I mean, you, you, you know, Re- Rockstar is always pretty good about the games they release, but good God, like, what's it going to come with? Microtransactions? You know, are, are we going to fucking play a game for, like, the next fucking 15 years while fucking three more consoles come out and, you know, new gen, new gen, new gen shit? Like, I don't really, you know, I. this is one of those things where, like, they took one of my favorite video games of all time, or I should say video game franchises of all time, and, like, I really, uh, I give about half a fuck right now about it. Like, yeah, I give about about half, half it's, of one fuck. It's definitely, it's definitely, kind of upsetting to see what has happened. I mean, at this point, I'm just like, okay, GTA Six, it's coming. Right. We right, know right. it's coming now. No footage though. I got there's there's dudes who are making Unreal Engine, who are going into the Unreal Engine and making their own stuff. Sure. Uh, so let's get into the military news real quick. Um, July 25th, okay. which is not only my wife's birthday. Happy oh, yeah? birthday. Happy birthday, Frenchie. Fuck yeah. DD214 royalty as well, you know. Yeah. And uh, July 25th, National Hire a Veteran Day. How a Military okay. Mindset Helps Uncover New Job Opportunities. This is an article that was just put out by Military.com. Um, John Glitz, the son of the father of Marines, served 30 years in the Marine Corps. This is the writer of the of the article. I'm retiring as a colonel in 2019. And he's currently a project director director at Atlantic Marine Corps communities, serving families across eight Marine, Navy, military installations. That's the that's the cited source of this article that I'm reading this from. Um, but yeah, guys, um, I from experience went through a program for Target to receive the job that I have today. And it's, it's, you know, it's, uh, to, it's pretty, it's pretty cool to have these opportunities to be hired, you know, because I, it, we should be, you know, we, we should, we, we work, you know, we, we have work ethic and there should be no reason why we shouldn't be hired. Now, you know, there are, uh, there are things, um, you know, there are factors that, that, you know, PTSD, uh, physical disabilities that that mm-hmm. could happen that may not be able to help with our everyday lifestyles or even work lifestyles sure you, not, a, not not a, not every job is uh, conducive to every veteran obviously yeah so so yeah there's definitely jobs i would not even want to attempt to try to do right now or i would not like i wouldn't make it in an office environment probably longer than i don't know 30 seconds you know, something like that. Probably, I'd just be like, "Ah, I'm good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk right back out where the way I came." Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, hey, hey, guys, there are there are some good jobs out there. There's some really, there, obviously, there's some really bad jobs out there. But there are, you know, there's always an opportunity for you. Just like there correct. was, just like there was for me, just like there was for Jay. I mean, Jay, Jay is living fucking proof right now. The guy got out of the army. Weeks later, he's he's. He has Elton John breathing behind his back. <laughs> yeah. You know? Hello. Like, Hello. <laughs> that fucking dude scared the shit out of me, dude. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and that's an incredible story to, to tell, is it not? No, it's fun. Yeah, it's fun, Jay, it's fun Jay, to tell. The story. Jay Campbell, the host of the DD214 podcast, <laughs> founder of DD214 Gaming, right? And no, 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 no. I was not the founder. I was not the founder. Oh, you're not the founder. Okay, okay. Nope. Nope, I was one of the. I was just one of the probably first thirty. <laughs> first thirty, I was somewhere like I was somewhere like above number twenty and below number thirty oh, and we dwindled, in the group. And we dwindled it down. Oh yeah, we it, it really, we, we really existed in name only for a while, and then it 
and then we kind of skyrocketed for a little bit and then we've kind of we've plateaued but i i love i love that our community is kind of like it's it's still there and people are still people are still using it and people are still platforming off of it and that's exactly what it's for that is exactly what the fuck it's for so yep and and hey guys you know if you need if you need help looking through these programs i you know i have experience helping others with this feel free to contact me if you're having a hard time looking for a job contact me and i will guide you in the right direction to find an area of expertise that you feel that you're in i you know again i got my job through a veteran program through target you know and i got instant i got hired just a couple days later didn't this was during the coronavirus there is always someone hiring there's and there's always there's always someone more than willing to hire a veteran like it's it's there's it, stuff out there you just sometimes you just have to look yeah that, I mean, that's really the hard heart the hardest part with any anything like this is just there's finding shit there's yeah. like the 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 the, the work the workforce since coronavirus has all the fucking cards on their fucking table all the fucking chips on their side okay there's work out there every business that i've heard of in the last two years is fucking hurting for people yeah. so you you as the uh the prospective employee have all the fucking all the fucking shit on your side and in your favor just go out there and fucking get some homie what is the worst they can fucking tell you Hell no yeah, man be like okay cool off to the fucking next one fucking enjoy enjoy fucking employing somebody you know like yeah, okay and and you like, would be surprised how many employers would be excited to have a veteran on their team especially ones that especially one that's got stories it's it's true it's very it's very very true and there's a lot of people that are very proud uh to to assist the veteran community and to continue uh to help help the helping the veteran community serve itself and serve others uh after service you know what I mean? That's really the idea, right? Is to continue our service after we get out, anyways, right? And then also, you can go to the VFW as well. You know, you, you can. can uh, VFW, D Disabled American Veterans, is a place called the U.S. Veterans Center. There is a multitude and a wealth of resources out there. Again, sometimes it takes some digging. I'm not going to sit here and say it's all easy to find. Uh, I just came across a group uh, this last week, um, and have been able to enroll and start uh, getting back, getting like hard back into therapy. Um, and it was because I, I basically finished enrolling in, in the VA, right? I got like my fucking fancy ass VA card and shit, right? Or your veteran, so, like, your veteran first card. Yeah. I got to go get the DOD one now. So like I, yeah. I had to wait, for, I had to wait for this card to come in the mail. Now I got to go like either a fucking, I'm hoping Fort Leavenworth can do it. Cause if they can, I got to go all the way to fucking Riley or goddamn Leonard Wood from here to fucking like get a fucking new video. Well, maybe not. I don't know. There might be like a guard armories or something maybe around here. I don't fucking know. But I got to go get the DOD official one too. So, but yeah, that's coming up this week. But, uh, but yeah, there's there's pro programs and there's stuff out there for veterans. Sometimes, dep and depending on your, your status or situation, uh, a lot of the stuff is can, can be either free or about as close to fucking free as you would ever expect. So use your resources. Utilize them. I know they're not all easy to, to find. They fucking bury a lot of our benefits in a lot of fucking jargon and fucking shit to where I went to the VA last week, bro, to like kind of in, finish enrolling and all that crap. And like they hand me this fucking giant packet and I'm like, OK, well, which part of this fucking packet like involves me? Like me, my, me specifically, like what are my fucking and they're, the lady just kind of like, oh, yeah, like, yeah, no shit, no fucking shit. Like you fuck you fucking work here and you can't even fucking tell me like what my actual fucking benefits are. Thanks, lady. Appreciate it. You know what I mean? Like no what no wonder I'm in fucking therapy, right? There like no fucking shit. Like m motherfuckers wonder why I get so fucking angry, right? Like that's the that's the bureaucracy we fucking live with, right? It's not a bad gig though, and I and, and in all honesty, yes, we have to do some research. This is what your veteran service officers are for, those are called VSOs. Utilize your VSOs, utilize your freaking veterans groups, whether it's the VFW, disabled American veterans. Uh, aspects of the VA, U.S. Veterans, uh, the U.S. Veterans, um, U.S. Veterans Center, uh, which was started by a group of Vietnam veterans. Uh, utilize your resources, guys. Whether you live in a city or whether you live out in a rural area, um, start making phone calls. Uh, you know, Sergeant Google is your friend with this shit. Help, Sergeant help Google. yourself. Help yourself so we can, so you can help others and the week and then we can maybe help you. Okay, but you got to help yourself first. Okay, we can't. You got you know when the, when the plane's fucking nose diving and those goddamn oxygen masks fucking come down from the ceiling, you got to put yours on fucking first, homies. Put yours on first, then help the motherfuckers to your left and your right. Yeah, all right, let's fucking get her done. Yeah, and you can't help yeah. anybody else yeah. if you can't help anybody else if you're dying. So, 
That's correct. That is correct. Yeah, and hey, so. and you know what? Well, I'm gonna. I had another news article, but you know what? That's a little dark. So we're gonna keep it lighthearted for the day. <laughs> no, you, no worries on that. No you know, so on that. We'll, you know, we'll keep it. We'll keep it light because I actually kind of like you know that we should be promoting National Hire a Veteran Day. And let me and let me tell you, that was a clip. So expect tomorrow on National Hire a Veteran Day some clips out there. So go get Good. yourself hired, ladies and gentlemen. So thank thank Fucking you for, thank you for your contribution to America, Jay. Oh, oh man, it, it, it's it's been my pleasure to serve. My pleasure to serve. Yes, it has. Let me tell you. Whose week is it? Is it me? I think it's me this week. I think you. I think you've run. I think you've done two in a row. I forget, man. I, I forget. yeah. I I don't fucking remember, dude. Well, I, before we get <laughs> to that, hey guys, big shout out. First off, Jeremy Strobridge, Ben Davies, Diamond Rock RP, Deshaun Myers, The Mandos, Jason Gasses. Francesca, Pablo Martinez, Darla Pablo Mar Irvin, Pablo Martinez, hey, Chris Patterson, fan fantasy author, Chris Pat Chris Patterson, oh dude, um, what else? We get? Just 80, getting long, eighty, it's getting, getting really, it's getting really long. Check out yeah. our friends, check out our friends, and you know, New Jersey, what? New Jersey Veterans Network, New Jersey Veterans it. Network, and guys, Local you know what? I, I just, I'm just gonna have to make a, a separate page with all the links to our friends on dd214 gaming oh real quick i got a, i got a very quick little news news thing for you it'll take two seconds oh, right let's, here let's see i already got the fucking so every because i'm a life member i get this really cool vfw magazine every oh, yeah. every month right oh yeah this month they had a spread it's called gaming for veterans and it's about a national army an army national guardsman and a vfw member from vermont he said he created a video game facebook channel sound familiar to help raise awareness for veterans' issues. He does it to honor his brother's memory who served with him in Afghanistan. So this is uh, a spread in this month's uh, yeah. VFW. I think what I can do is, uh, since we're all fucking pirates here, and I don't really think the VFW is going to cry about it, I think I'm just going to screen, I'm going to like take a picture of these individual pages because it's only a two, looks like a two-page spread, and I'll put them in. The, I'll put these the, the article in the comments. Cool. Okay. So I think we can do that. And yeah, so that, expect that here in about, uh, you know, 30, 30 seconds to uh, two hours after we yeah, finish the broadcast. I should, so. be, uh, I should be receiving my magazine, too, because I get my monthly magazine as well. Thank, thank, Fuck, hey. shout out to Jay Boxwell, who is, uh, you know, who gave, you know, I, I, I was a member of the VFW. I, I think I have to renew it. I have to renew my American Legion membership, too, actually. Fuck me. But, but yeah, well, take it off, man. Well, yeah. So uh, every week we do uh, the final thoughts. So I guess we've we made it another 168. Um, always want to encourage our brothers and sisters uh, around the world, uh, not just not just here uh, in America, uh, worldwide. Okay, um, you got it. You got to fucking you got to make it another 168 for us. We don't ask for five minutes, and we don't ask for 24 hours on this show. We ask a lot more because uh, our expectations are a lot higher, and we love you. That much, uh, that much as a human being, we would believe in you. Okay, uh, I want to talk about a couple of positive things that happened in my life this week. Uh, been going to bed earlier. Okay, been waking cool. up without an alarm. You know, at a, but at a, but at a better time. Um, been working out a lot more in the basement, so that when I do go stand in the fucking sun for seven goddamn hours straight, okay, I'm not heat stroking the fuck out. Taking better care of our bodies. Uh, as I as I mentioned, uh, finished my enrollment with the VA. I have now been to two therapy sessions. I already have two more fucking lined up uh, this week coming. Okay. So I'm getting ready to go fucking like hard in the paint, you know, talking to somebody again about some of the issues that I personally have uh, in my own life. Um, I am, I am what you would, uh, what would be called or considered a, a disabled veteran. Uh, I know by appearances, it doesn't always seem that way. Okay. Well, fucking here as well. Uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's take a fucking page out of Patty, Patty Pimlet's book from the UFC last night. I don't know if you saw that or not, John, his fucking speech last night, Patty Pimlet fucking had a major victory last night in the UFC. He found out five hours before he weighed in on Friday, uh, across the pond in, in the UK that he had lost a friend to suicide. Um, this shit is fucking real and it impacts people severely. Um, we want you to know there is hope. There is hope out there. There is a life down the road that you cannot see. And we promise you, future you will appreciate you for hanging on. Okay, I need to make that very clear. 
okay? I am future me right now from a guy that was fucking feeling sorry for himself like fucking 23, 24 fucking years ago. So it's been almost a quarter century since I was a teenager, but I remember that kid, and I remember the thoughts that he had, and I remember the struggles, the insecurity, okay? That kid has now grown up. He's a fucking goddamn war veteran. He's been through a lot of shit fucking inside and outside of the Army. But when I hear that voice of doubt creeping inside my fucking brain, I tell it to shut the fuck up. I've got two beautiful children. I have a beautiful girlfriend, okay? Life is not perfect, okay? The sky doesn't rain diamonds every day. There's not a fucking unicorn with a fucking giant boner and a fucking rainbow coming out of it in my fucking world every single day, okay? What there is in my world is a lot of love, a lot of compassion, and a lot of support, okay? And that's what we all fucking need. If you need love, if you need compassion, you need support, you need to stand up, pick up the phone, and you need to call somebody. It can be somebody close to you. It can be a friend. It can be a family member. It can be somebody you haven't heard from in 10 fucking years that you went to elementary school with. It does not fucking matter. Call someone. If you have no one to call, if you're at the end of your rope, if you don't want to bother people because, you know, you're just freaking the fuck out a little bit with anxiety and you need to fucking vent, there's numbers you can call. One of them is 1-800-273-8255. That's 1-800-273-TALK. That is the National Suicide Hotline. Uh, we've discussed before, you do not have to be suicidal to reach out to that number in any regard. Nationally, last weekend, they've, they, they, they began a, a full release of 988. That is a three-digit number you can call or text that will direct, direct link you to the National Suicide Hotline. So same, same with 988. Okay, works exactly the same. You can text it or you can call it. Okay, do not be afraid to reach out for help. Men, like Patty Pimblett said last night, men, specifically, I'm talking to you, start fucking talking. You got feelings in there? Start fucking letting them out. It's okay to fucking cry sometimes. It's okay to fucking, like, have a goddamn bad day. It's okay to admit that you struggle getting out of fucking bed in the morning sometimes. Okay? It doesn't mean you ain't got a fucking dick. It doesn't mean you ain't, that you're not a fucking man. It doesn't mean you're not fucking yeah. strong. Okay? You're a lot fucking stronger for admitting you need fucking goddamn help. Okay? So take, take some responsibility for yourself, for your future health, for the health of your future family and your children. Okay? Get help. Seek it out. All right? Do something proactive in your own life so that someday when somebody else is going through their shit, you can turn around and you can say, you can reach out your hand and say, hey, brother, I'm here. I've been there, and I'm going to bring you all the way up here with me. I'm going to take some weight out of your fucking rucksack and put it in mine, and we're going to walk until you're fucking good. All right? So I want to wish everyone a very, very merry week ahead. Be safe out there, guys. Um, we had a couple of uh, unexpected uh, deaths uh, in my world this week, but they were they were not from suicide. They were actually from heart attacks, both of them. Oh, shit. Uh, one was one was one was that. One was a one was an active duty brother, uh, and I'm gonna miss him very, very much. His name was Giancarlo Scapus. He was a sergeant. He was an infantryman, United States Army. He was on my third deployment. He was a. I remember when he came to our battalion as a private. Um, I'm gonna miss him very, very dearly. He apparently died of a heart attack. Um, I, I don't know or have details. And there was a young lady. I say young lady, uh, right around my age, uh, who very suddenly and unexpectedly passed away. Um, also of a heart attack uh, back in Arizona, where I'm from. And I want to wish uh, wish and give all of our condolences to, to her and her children, her husband and our families from here, all of us here at DD214 Gaming. Guys, we don't know when the fucking end's going to be. Okay, live every day like it's your fucking last. Tell your fucking family and your friends how much you goddamn love them. Give them hugs, give them kisses. If you've, if you've been a fucking asshole, it's okay to say like, hey, I'm sorry, I was acting like an asshole. Don't be afraid to say you're sorry. Bury that motherfucking hatchet, move the fuck forward, and love life with the kind of tenacity and ferocity that we used in fucking Iraq and Afghanistan. All right? All right, I want everybody to keep a fucking hard dick, all right, out there this week. Fucking beat some fucking ass and curb stomp the fuck out of the next 168. I love you, John. I love you, Jay. I'll see you next week, my brother. Yes, sir. Who? Stay out of the trouble, guys. <laughs>